Well, hello folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your weekly Neo T.A. Wrap. We take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened last week, but what does it tell us about the coming ones? I do this show every Sunday evening, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube, and it's under the channel L.A. Little. You can catch it there, subscribe if you do so, uh, then anytime content is pushed, either on these shows or others, You'll be notified, and uh, that's an easy way to keep up with this. As far as what happened with these markets, if we look at them last week, big sell-off, right? Pretty much all week long. You got a little bump up on Monday, and then it was four days straight down. That cumulative losses anywhere from about 2 to about 3% across the board. So looking at that S&P 500, what did it do? Well, it did two things. One, it came back to that first area where you should have gotten support and didn't. Then it came back to the last area where you should get support, which basically was from about here to about there. And that's where it found support finally, at least for now. Volume escalating a little bit here as we go uh, back down. Big volume here on that bar. You're into the bar. If you stay into it another day, another bar, more than likely you're going to try to seek the bottom. Now what is that bottom? That bottom on the S&P 500 is the bottom of the range. So if we look at it here on this time frame, you know what you see is basically a 90 point move from 44 to 34 on that time frame. If you zero out or actually pull back and look at it on a weekly time frame, you can see that same bottom down in this area and you can see that consolidation that's really been going on since February. Way back in February, we hit these levels. We've been in these levels ever since. We're talking about seven months at these levels. That's a consolidation. Consolidations tend to break usually, right, in the direction of the trend. So in other words, expectation is, is that eventually this thing will break higher if you just take the averages. But you know, every now and then you actually do get a top, and I know that's kind of hard to believe, but sometimes that does happen. And if this really is some sort of a rolling top, then this break in this area here could be significant. Swing point lows down here, swing point lows up here. You break these, you go after those, and eventually you go after this one, if that's the way it works. That's the S&P 500. NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ, a little bit different story, right? This one broke all the way out, got over the highs, and if you pull this back and look at it on the weekly, you can see that break of a swing point high, you get over it, but then you start coming back. So that break now is in question, and on the daily, the retest regen, in other words, regenerating or attempting to off the swing point that you broke, has already failed. Here on the weekly, it hasn't, of course, and that, uh, that number there is uh, this bar. And what we're looking for is uh, whether or not, as it comes back, whether it will hold that price point or not. If it doesn't, believe me, this is going to break down. 49.21 is the number uh, there. NDX, a little bit stronger. Uh, that, of course, had you know, Google shooting it up. You had some other big cap stocks that taking it higher. This one's come back to do the retest regen it's itself. 45.61 is the number. It is at 45.51, so it's in there. It's doing the retest regen now question is, is will it hold? If it doesn't hold, what does that do? Well, that doesn't say it's a total breakdown. That says that no longer is this trend up, but instead sideways, most likely. And this is kind of your early warning system, if you will, if you will, because a lot of times a break of this price point does not break a swing point low. It just so happens in this case that that will be a swing point low. And so a break there would transition trend as well as uh, failing on the regenerate. Russell, small caps. One of the things we were looking for last week, and I told subscribers that we would look for, was whether or not the Russell could actually break higher. And, 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 and what we were looking at is, is could we get some rotation into this? Well, not only did we not get rotation into it, it got even worse. You did a bearish engulfing, and then you got follow through, and now you're like a penny above the swing point low. That, that volume there, you still don't have the volume here as you're coming into it, so there's a good chance that this will get a bounce. But if it does bounce, and that's all it does is bounce, you know, then you set up some sort of an ABCD structure to go lower. And if you pull this back and look at it on a weekly time frame, the same thing that we see everywhere else is starting to develop here. And that is, is that this range is starting to be a range right if we take it back it's february just like everything else 
that's the time frame everything's seven months now in a range stuck in the mud so to speak if you move over and you look at the world markets it doesn't look quite as bad and, and, and bad in the sense of what happened last week you know for example if we look at uh, the CACs in France France goes up gets up towards the highs tests them gets over this high doing a retest regen off those highs now that will be the thing to watch this week there can it get underneath here and you know fail to regenerate even higher if you pull it back look at it on a weekly basis you know you've got that range we talked a long time about how this range was probably going to develop how it would more than likely try to come back into this area that's exactly what it did it took for a long time but it did that now it's got the bounce that's the first bounce and if you divide this thing up you kind of got two ranges right you've got the top and the bottom so the question is going to be is can you break back down into the bottom range or do you hold above so in the higher range so that price point off the weekly is this bar that's the big bar 49.22 German DAX kind of the same a little bit weaker uh, but the same sort of story pull it back you can see it here and it's coming into the big bar now top there's 11.339 we close at 11.347 so it's only eight points below it if you look elsewhere and we go over to Asia and look at Hong Kong Hong Kong starting to try and roll over here and then if we go look at the Shanghai index the Shanghai is actually doing the opposite and that is is that with all the support the central banks throwing at that market it's actually broke over that high that's a that was a, a B point here so you got a B point now you're breaking over that B point right and you're going to try to make an ABCD up and go up to a D point up in this area so Shanghai trying to move higher of course if you get back underneath here kind of gives away all that goodness and then it would be key that it hold in this area here if not then it's back down the other way and it's going to test those lows this too now has developed into a very large range the range here is 35 percent from top to bottom and so it's a big one so where's the halfway point well the halfway point is into the swing point low just where you would think and that's where it's coming to test as we speak so that's the test on the shanghai so when we look over the europe and we look over at uh, you know the Asian markets it really doesn't look quite as bad now coming back to the US markets let's look at the major sectors if we scroll over to those we're gonna see some action here that's not gonna look so good and that is, is that for example on the IBB the biotech biotechnology gets under the swing point high volume escalates hugely big drop here you look at it on the weekly it's coming back to do the retest regen but if you go look at some of these others, for example, like say the transports, the transports had already gotten into the highs of the lows from October of last year. Looks like they're going to go after the lows at this point. If you look at the basic materials, basic materials are going after the lows of uh, the October lows from last year. If you look at the energy sector, the energy sector is already under the lows from the past year. So overall and one more industrials the industrials coming down they break on the daily they're going after the top of that bar so overall you're starting to see deterioration in a number of sectors right that's mirroring the wide divergences that we have in these markets where really if you look at it from a sector perspective you got financials that are still holding they're holding that retest region they got a nice big spike up and you had technology doing the same although technology had a, had a nice hit as it came uh, under earnings pressure last week and then if we look at the last one that was doing really well the XLV it comes off with volume and here again doing a retest regen charts don't look that bad but at the same time what you do have is you have you know a trend that's up that now is being tested and that's the lows that you have to you know watch if it gets under those kind of changes trend changes everything so you still got some sectors strong you got some sectors weak you got a range just the same sort of thing we've been talking about for a while uh, when we come back here we'll flip over and uh, look at some uh, uh, member or, or viewer questions and then we'll also uh, take a quick look at some of the ox markets uh, so oil and some of the others commodities and uh, do a wrap so I'll be right back do you have retirement funds you want to keep invested, yet you constantly worry about a potential market crash? 
As L.A. says, you shouldn't worry about a crash until it's time. Through L.A.'s extensive research, he has identified the key characteristics that are necessary for a market crash. In the 2008 crash, for example, our investors actually made money and avoided huge losses through LA's investment advice. Because the markets usually go up, our retirement service keeps you invested when risk is low and reduces your exposure when risks become elevated. There are three portfolios you can follow, aggressive, balanced, and conservative. It's a simple process at a reasonable cost that requires very little of your time. To learn more, go to our homepage, hover over Retirement Service, and click Get Started. Okay, as we come back here, uh, we got a couple of viewer questions. Let's take a look at those. Uh, one of them is uh, AMN Healthcare Systems. If we look at it on the daily time frame, you know, you've basically got a range trade taking place here. Uh, so you got the tops, bottoms, and then inside that you can kind of divide it up uh, about right there. And so it's back in the bottom half. You've got this big volume bar. It came up and tested into that and was un unable to get over it. So it looks to me like it's going to come down and test this lower end of the range on the daily time frame. If we look at it on a weekly, uh, you know, a nice big spike up. Many times when you see this kind of a, a blow-off type spike, in other words, the volume here just far exceeds everything else you've had, that usually signals some sort of a range trade going to develop at best. And if I look at it on a weekly and say, where's the support, you can see them down here in the green. You've got this little one up here, but I suspect this range is going to develop over a larger area, and you'll see it come back into these uh, swing point lows. So I don't know that I would certainly uh, uh, wouldn't be chasing this. Um, you know, this is a range trade. You want to get it on the way back, uh, not up here at the highs. That would be my take on that one. Another one here was uh, Data, which is uh, Tableau software. Uh, this has been one of the faves of the hot shots. You know, they've been gunning this thing higher, like some of the others. Nice big spike up back here. You know, gap up. You continue, get a little retrace back into that gap up high and then you take off again uh, on the earnings that are about to come up on it. That on Friday was actually a, um, I think it went over the top, let's check it again, 131, no it actually didn't. So you didn't get a higher high, you came off with a little bit of volume escalation. So that suggests, you know, on a short term basis, this thing's going to come back in and try to do a retest regen off this prior high. If I look at it on a weekly, right, so it's a great stock coming back. Uh, it could come all the way on this time frame, could come all the way back into this high. That's about 112.58. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's hard on anything right now with the market as it is to assume it's going to go up. You have to buy retraces. So, again, like on the ANN, uh, I would, or excuse me, the AHS, the A and B uh, healthcare. I would be looking at this and trying to buy it on a retrace, uh, not on these breakouts. So switching, switching modes here. You know, I want to talk about two or three things that's taking place, and the biggest one that's taking place right now is the dollar again. The dollar is trying to break out. Now, if the dollar breaks out, it's going to be an issue for these markets, just like it has been previously, and that is, is that this consolidation that's taking place up here. If you get the break higher and this thing does start to push up, right, that's going to put pressure on a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, foreign markets. It's also going to put pressure on the U.S. market. So, you know, I, I think that in the pressure for on overseas is going to be, you know, in emerging markets uh, primarily. If we, if we look at it on a weekly, that's a swing point high it's going after. It doesn't have the volume yet, but it's trying to eke up there and get into this little little bitty zone that's sitting up here and that zone if we draw it in is right into this area right here so that's kind of where it's trying to get into if it gets over that zone then it can go back and test those highs at some point you know just like we talk about other things you have a strong trend this is a very strong trend it's going sideways now basically from here across so it's from the beginning of the year forward. So we've got about seven, eight months of uh, sideways action. At some point when it does break higher, it's going to have another large move. That 
of course, is going to be issues for U.S. stocks, uh, in particular the large cap stocks that have foreign exposure because a weaker dollar, excuse me, a stronger dollar hurts their earnings uh, from overseas. So we will see some pressure off of that. The earnings this particular quarter have benefited from the fact that this thing has gone sideways and not up over the last quarter. So that, uh, you know, that's one issue that's out there. The other one that's uh, worth watching, and right now it doesn't mean anything, but that is, is that the bonds, right? The bonds are starting to move up again. If you bring it back, the bonds are back into the big bar from October in terms of uh, into the bar itself. So if I draw this across and say, where is that bar? It's there, right? So you're back into it. As you come back up, the test is going to be on the swing point lows. It's a retest regenerate situation. That will be the key area. Now, if the bonds do get over that, they're probably going to be signaling that we have some sort of a larger issue starting to take place again and that uh, you know equities probably are not going to do that well. So the bonds are another place uh, to be watching. Finally, if we look at uh, uh, the, where are they here, high yield bonds, if we go look at equity bonds, so in other words, these are, these are bonds that have been issued by corporations and they're the high, uh, high quality bonds. When you high, have high, higher quality bonds and they still sell off, that's telling you that there's more concern about these corporations being able to pay back their debt and that people are unwilling to pay those premiums that they were willing to pay previously. And so when I see this and I see how it's coming back, you know, that's a concern as well because that also tells you that equities may, and I say may, they may be coming under pressure here at some point because the bond holders usually, quote unquote, are the smarter holders when it comes to longer term uh, structures and in this case longer term debt. So that's uh, the three things I'd be watching out as far as what's going to happen this week. You know, if I go back and pull up the S&P 500, 